Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from OnlinePhotographyTraining.com. The most common question I've been receiving lately is whether or not I'm going to be doing a new video series on On One Photo Raw 2019. And the answer is yes, I'm going to be doing it and I should be beginning that series very shortly. In this video, I just want to go over a couple of what I consider to be significant changes to the new software. Changes that are in On One Photo Raw 2019 from On One Photo Raw 2018. Now, as you could see, I have On One Photo Raw 2018 open. And probably the most significant change to the new version of this software is that they took layers and they integrated it more fully into the workflow. And you're actually, when you're using layers now, going to be working on the raw data or the raw file, and it's totally non-constructive. Now, in the past, when you're on the On One Photo Raw 2018, like I am now, you'll notice on the right-hand side, we have the modules, we have Browse Develop, and then you have Effects, and then Layers. And if I did click on Layers, it would actually take my raw file and create a PSD file to work on. So you're not working on all that raw data that you would have been able to, or hopefully wanted to, I guess, work on. That's changed in On One Photo Raw 2019. And again, in my consideration, it's the biggest change in On One Photo Raw 2019. And here we are in On One Photo Raw 2019. And if you look over at the right now, you'll see there's just two modules, the Browse module and an Edit module. And right now I'm in the Edit module and I have this rather mundane picture, but you could see that I did some adjustments to it. But you'll notice that above here now we have Develop. These are the Develop adjustments. We have Effects, so we could add any effects that are available in On One Photo 2019 uh, to this image right here. Uh, we have portrait adjustments if we were adjusting portrait and then we have local adjustments so we could do um, graduated filters and brushes uh, to our image right here and do them as layers and it's on the raw file so this is um, a lot more powerful than what it was in the past before when you did local adjustments it was uh, further up the chain of adjustments. So you hit all those other adjustments below it. Now local adjustments are more on top of the raw file. So you'll have more raw data to work with. So the highlights, midtones, shadows, whites, and blacks sliders will have more effect and better effect on your images. But as I mentioned, I think the best and most significant change to On One Photo Raw 2019 is the integration of layers into your workflow. So you're not creating a PSD file, then bringing that PSD file into an independent layers module. Now layers is right here. So I could do develop adjustments on my layer, uh, effects adjustments on the layer. If there was a person in here, I could do portrait adjustments. I could do local adjustments all on this layer. And if I wanted to add another layer, I could add the second, third, fourth, whatever layers to the image and do those adjustments independently to those layers. And I'm just going to do something real quick to try to demonstrate what I'm talking about. And it's probably going to look horrible because I didn't really practice this ahead of time. So we have this base layer. And as you can see, the sky is pretty bad. And I did do some adjustments to this layer. I did tone and color adjustment. Um, didn't do any detail. I did some lens corrections. All right, I didn't even do lens corrections, but that's okay. Um, I added a curves adjustment in effects. So that's what was done to this layer. Now I'm going to do something to that sky. So I'm going to swap it out. So I'm going to add another layer. So I'm going to click on this little plus sign. And it's telling you that when you create a layered photo, it is saved as a new non-destructive dot on photo. This contains full raw data for each layer you add. It is re-editable in On One Photo Raw and may be exported to other formats. So that's a significant change from the previous version. This is non-destructive 
raw data you're going to be working on. So we're going to add that layer. And now it's asking me to pick an image that I want to use. But I'm going to use one of the sky uh, pictures that comes with on one. So I'm going to click on extras. And I'm going to click on on one extras. Then I'm going to click to backgrounds. Then I'm going to click to skies. And I'm just going to kind of eyeball it real quick and try to find a layer, a sky, I should say, that matches kind of tone and color to my image. I think this one might a little bit. So I'm going to click on that and then go down here to add layer. And you're going to see it's just going to plop it right on there. So I'm going to go to the move tool. And I'm not going to expand it so it covers the entire screen. I'm just going to resize it so it kind of fits the uh, top area of my image. So we'll just kind of spread it out like that. And that's good. So we're going to click Apply. All right, so now I have this sky layer up there. Now I'm going to flip-flop the order of the layers. Right now my original layer is at the bottom and the sky layer is on the top. So I'm just going to click on the bottom layer and just drag it up above so it's on top. Now you can see it's, it's covering up the sky, as, as you see there. There's the sky and there is that layer. Now I need to mask in the sky that's in the bottom layer. So I'm going to stay clicked on this top layer. I'm going to get a mask. I'm just going to do this like very simply. Not the best way. And I will have in the uh, video series for On One Photo Raw 2019, I will demonstrate how to swap out a sky properly so it looks perfect. Again, I'm just doing this to show you the power that is now in the layers uh, part of On One Photo Raw 2019. So I have this brush. I want to uh, paint out this bad sky. And I'm going to use the perfect brush. And I'm just going to go down here and I'm just going to paint in the sky like this. Now, like that. Okay. So that kind of looks horrible, but you get the idea. And what I want to show you is I have the top layer selected. The top layer is actually the foreground. And if we remember, I did adjustments to that. I did tone and color adjustments, and I added a curves effect to it. Now I need to adjust this sky to make it look a little more uh, matching to the rest of the image. So I'm going to click on that sky layer. So that is selected. And now you'll notice tone and color doesn't have any adjustments to it at all because I didn't do anything to that yet. But I'm going to go down here and I'm going to take shadows and I'll open up shadows and maybe bring highlights down a little bit. See what midtones do. Try to get it just so it matches a little better. Um, maybe just warm it up a touch, maybe a touch too much, something like that. So you could see how. I could now work on these layers independently. And if I wanted to add an effect just to this layer, um, I could then go to the effects and click add filter. And while I'm here, I'll just mention that your filter picker is different now. You could see you have this uh, thing here. And if you hover over the different filters, it will give you a preview on the right hand side or a demo, I should say, on the right hand side and a little explanation of what that filter does. Now, uh, let's just say I want to blur that sky a little bit. So I could search for a blur filter, and you could see that uh, blur, glow, and lens blur all will do the trick. So let's pick lens blur. Let's just try uh, something not like that. Let's go to more. Let's go to medium bokeh but not that much tone it down just a little bit of a blur i want to add to that and i think that works so you get the idea it was what i'm i'm trying to do actually that looks horrible so i'm going to get rid of it but i could add an effect to just the sky so all these um four um adjustment areas develop effects portrait and local would, could be done just to the layer you're working on. So I think having layers integrated into the workflow like it is now is much more powerful than it used to be. 
Now I alluded to the fact that there's some different effects in here. And if we go to add filter, uh, what you'll notice mainly is that where they had um, like in col they had a color enhancer filter and they still have it. But inside of the color enhancer filter in on one photo raw 2018, it had a lot of different types of adjustments. And one of the adjustments was an actual color adjustment. And they took that out of the color enhancer filter and they put it by itself as its own filter. Also, I think film grain was integrated in another filter and they took that out. Um, so there's some of these are new and some are, um, parts were parts of other filters that they decided to break out on their own and it makes them a little more effective to use. So that's the uh, changes there. Um, the other thing I just want to talk about very quickly is for those of you that use Lightroom and you might be a little hesitant to jump over to on one photo raw 2019 because you've used Lightroom for years and you have all your keywords and you have your uh, star ratings and you have your picks and unpicks and you have color labels and you have adjustments. You, would, you have so many different images that have been processed in Lightroom that if you go over into on one photo raw 2019 in the past with older versions, those adjustments and all those ratings and those other things wouldn't come over with it. Well, they now have a migration assistant and a migration assistant will bring over all your star ratings, your color labels, your picks, your non-picks, your keywords, and it brings over the adjustments. Now it doesn't like move the sliders exactly like Lightroom has the sliders moved. Instead, it has some machine learning built into it now and algorithms that look at the actual image and sees how it's adjusted and then tries to match those adjustments in on one photo raw 2019. Now to do this, you would go to your Lightroom, as you can see, I'm in Lightroom now, and then I would go up to file. I'd be in the library module, by the way, I go to file, plug in extras. Then you go down here to migrate catalog to on one photo. And when you do that, you'll come up with um, this dialog box that steps you through the process. Now I haven't done it yet because I want to demonstrate how this is done in one of my uh, upcoming videos. My, I, I'm not sure what I'm calling the series yet, but for the sake of discussion, let's say I'm calling it mastering on one photo raw 2019 in that video series, I'll demonstrate how this is done. But again, this will bring over all those settings that you probably, um, you know, were hesitant about, uh, or you kept you, I guess, from moving over to on one photo raw 2019, uh, because you have so much work done in Lightroom. You don't want to lose all that work. Well, the migration assistant should help you with that now. And to me, those are the most significant changes. Now, there are a lot of other little things here and there that are different, and I'll cover that all in the new video series. So hopefully you'll join me for that uh, new video series. And again, I'm not sure the name yet, but it's going to be uh, everything you want to know about On One Photo Raw 2019. It will be similar in format to my previous video series mastering on one photo raw 2018 and where i'll start really as a newbie someone who's never saw the software before and work you right through it and hopefully by the last video you're an on one photo raw 2019 expert thank you everyone that watches my videos i truly do appreciate it i'll talk to you guys soon